Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another Hornby tank engine review. Okay, so today I'm going to be looking at this, which is the Stania uh, tank engine. It looks a lot like the Fowler one, and in fact when I bought it, I thought it probably was. I didn't know that there was such a thing as a Stania version, but there certainly is, and this is it. There's not a lot of difference, of course, between this and the Fowler version, uh, because uh, this is also a 264, of course. Uh, this is the two-cylinder version, if anybody's interested. Stania also did a three-cylinder one, apparently, and I think there's one preserved of the three-cylinder version. But no, this is the two-cylinder version, and this is the one that was not preserved. Anyway, Anyway, as you can see, if you look at the box, uh, the price on here, I got this from a train fare, by the way, the price on here is £69.75, and that also includes a decoder. And uh, the online eBay price for these, the going rate is between £70 and £100, and that is without the decoder installed. So actually, that price with a decoder is absolutely fantastic. And in fact, I managed to beat the guy down a fiver as well. I think I bought something else and got, uh, got this for £65 in the end. So really pleased with this. It was a fantastic bargain. It's not the newest thing in the world, and to be fair, it didn't work when I I got it home but I managed to fix it up and it didn't cost me anything to fix up so uh, yep £65 not bad at all let's see what it's like shall we the uh, the Stania uh, 4p tank uh, so yes as I was saying this isn't brand new and in fact the packaging looks very modern actually but as far as I know Hornby haven't produced this for a little while uh, certainly they're not producing this at the moment they are doing the uh, the Fowler version I think the Fowler tank but not the Stania one and as we're going to see when we open up the packaging it's got the slightly more old-fashioned packaging which uh, came along probably in the around 2010s maybe a little bit before that but nonetheless it is quite a modern loco as you can tell by the fact that it's uh, DCC fitted and uh, just by the packaging really but if I show you the end of the box you can see the R number on this particular one is R263X and I suppose X does that mean it's fitted with a decoder not too sure BR Stania 4MT 264T class 4P 42468 I believe that'll be the running number and yes as I say this one is decoder fitted with a Hornby decoder so that's fantastic Fantastic. And just before I get the box open, which I can't wait to do, I'm going to just show you the back of the box where you can see that this is classified as a 4P by the, the LMS, although this is in the uh, the early BR Black, so I think it was a 4MT. Yeah, there it is at the bottom. You can see standing a 4MT. I think uh, in the BR days it was reclassified to 4MT. And then in the middle here, you can see there's all sorts of information on the class. If you can focus in on that, if you can read it, feel free to pause it and do so if you like, but I will give you a brief history of the 4P later on. And then, of course, on the far side, Side here you've got an image of the thing in real life and that one also looks like it's in the early BR livery so that suits this particular model. No drawings of the locomotive design this time, I think Hornby only started doing that a little bit later on but it's nice to see that nonetheless. Anyway let me show you this thing then, let's get it out and see what it's like. So here we go and yeah as you can see this is uh, the slightly more old fashioned Hornby packaging. Um, I left the card in actually, I perhaps should have left that out so that you could see the loco but never mind, let's get this out then. So if I bring it out, you can see it has got the styrofoam packaging rather than the block of ice. And if I lift that off, you can see there the loco is inside. So we'll get to that in just a second. First of all, though, I will grab the instruction booklet. And as you can see, this is the 264T Class 4P locomotive and tender, it says on the front. So no, that's not quite right. I don't see a tender there. I believe that will be called the coal bunker, not a tender. Come on, Hornby, get it right. Anyway, on the inside, you've got uh, a quite a basic set of drawings, really, but it does show you the uh, the, the essentials. So you've got lubrication here, uh, fitting the accessories and things, a little bit on body removal, and yes, it also shows you the decoder socket there. So obviously that's not something for me to worry about because this one was fitted in the factory, but uh, if you needed to fit a decoder, if you didn't have one already, then obviously that's how you do it. And then you also get a detail pack, which has fallen off the top of the box here. It is actually open, but I don't think any of the detail is missing so inside there you've got a couple of couplings <laughs> a couple of couplings a little bit of brake rigging there some uh, painted cylinder drain cocks uh, you've got all kinds of vacuum pipes and couplings and things uh, steps it looks like a very very hefty detail pack but uh, quite a lot of work to do really if you if you wanted to fit all of that but uh, normally I don't so that's not something I've got to worry about but uh, yes okay let's start to unpacking this logo then and I say start because it takes a while with this packaging but uh, yeah all you do is you take the end off like this and this packaging generally does quite a good job but it, I don't think it's quite as secure well it is secure but it's not quite as protective as the block of ice is I don't think um, and then you take the front off and then the packaging itself is free to split in half and if I carefully stand it up 
there we go, I can grab the loco now. So here it is, and as I briefly mentioned earlier, yes, this has the uh, the early BR colour scheme with the early BR crest, and it really, really is lovely. First thing of note, it's relatively heavy. Again, it's not an impressively heavy model, and certainly I believe most of it, well, all of the bodywork at least, is uh, made of plastic. I doesn't feel as though the running board is uh, is made of die cast or anything like that but obviously the chassis will be so that's where the bulk of the weight comes from but uh, apart from just talking technical things just look isn't that just beautiful i really really love the shape of the lms tank engines uh, the fowler 4p as well i always love that but uh, this one is absolutely gorgeous uh, don't you think don't you think she's fantastic okay so here's a little bit of history on them then and as soon as i've gotten over with that i will uh, show you her up close so this model, as you know, is based on William Stanier's two-cylinder 4P tank, which in itself was based on the three-cylinder version and introduced in 1935 for passenger work on the LMS. The class was fairly numerous, consisting of 206 examples produced over almost 10 years, and all of the class, I believe, survived into the BR era following 1948 when they were reclassified as the 4MT, as we saw on the packaging there. And of course, that stands for mixed traffic, so presumably in the BR era they would have been doing goods as well as passenger work, but I suppose that's fair enough. But by 1960, of course, the class had begun to be withdrawn, just like most other classes, really. By the end of 1967, every member of the class had been withdrawn and scrapped and even though one of the three cylinder version has survived sadly none of this two cylinder variant uh, were preserved so unfortunately we've only got the models with that but obviously the three cylinder version looks fairly similar Okay, so there she is then, up against the white background, 42468, my uh, Stania tank engine, and as I touched on briefly uh, earlier, just a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. There's just something about the LMS tank engines for me. First of all, it's absolutely massive. The size of it is incredible. It's not little and quaint and cute by, by any means, but to me, just the size... Of, uh, of the of the model and of, obviously of the thing in real life is really impressive and the model really does capture that beautifully and also as you probably know I'm normally a big fan of the big four liveries so LMS liveries southern and also pre-grouping stuff generally I'm not a massive fan of the BR liveries and if I do like a BR livery it's probably going to be BR green rather than BR black but I have to confess when it comes to tank engines I actually find the BR black to be really really smart I mean there is just something about it that's business like but yet quite elegant elegant and dignified I think so uh, yeah I'm, I'm really loving the BR Black. Now as I touched on also earlier on most of the bodywork in fact most of the cosmetics are just done in plastic and I suppose that's quite common for locos that came from this kind of era you know talking around 10 years ago. These days normally models have you know a little bit of uh, metal work going on certainly on the running board and such but uh, no such luck with this one but then again the price I paid for it and the price that, that these generally seem to go for second hand does seem to take that into account account. I don't know exactly what Hornby's RRP for this would have been, but uh, you know, hopefully it wouldn't be as much as uh, they are these days with their uh, die-cast parts. But uh, anyway, we'll get on to the detailing later on, but first of all, let's take a look at the paint detail. So as you can clearly see there, we have the uh, the early BR crest on there, which, as always from Hornby, is beautifully applied. But then, of course, you've got the lining which goes around the tanks. You've got the, the red and uh, cream lining there. Again, quite finely and faultlessly applied, especially for a model which, to me, was very cheap and you've got all kinds of lining really especially along the running board there you've got the same kind of lining the boiler also has the banding on it which again is so finely done and perfectly done as well I've got a few Hornby Locos from this era which have a little bit of messiness on the paintwork uh, but no such thing with this this one is, is fantastic it really is and also on the coal bunker you've also got the the running number and the class uh, painted onto there very nicely and once again you've got yet more of that lining which again I can't really fault it looks pretty good if you ask me You've got quite a lot of other painted details, including the running number, which is duplicated on the end of the smoke box there. And also this device just behind, well, yeah, behind and to the left of the smoke box, you've got uh, all those pipes coming out of there, which have been separately painted. And it reminds me of the one on the King class, actually. That was also a really highly detailed piece, which was extremely impressive. And uh, this one is just the same, a really nice piece, that. And also the steam chest has lining on it, which is beautiful to see, of course. And just underneath the cab around the steps here, you've got this separately fitted 
fitted piping, which again is plastic, but it feels fairly sturdy actually. It doesn't seem to flex if you touch it by mistake. And again, that has been separately painted, which looks the part. Of course, there's quite a lot of other separately fitted work. We've already talked about the detail around the smoke box, but as you can see, you've got handrails there, pipe work. On top of the water tanks, you can see once again, quite a lot of detail going on there. I can't tell whether that's all separately fitted, but some of it at least looks like it's separately fitted. And just in front of the cab, you've got quite a nicely molded whistle there and uh, safety valves. I'm just trying to tell whether they're made of metal. I think they are. I think we can uh, say those are made of metal, which is nice to see. And around the cab, you've also got separately fitted glazed windows, which is nice to see and quite usual, I suppose, with models of this uh, caliber, certainly uh, of recent times. And on top of the cab, you can see you've also got uh, these uh, opening hatches, which uh, move and allow a little bit of air into the cab in real life. Although in this case, it just allows a little bit of light into the cab so that you can see the beautiful detail inside there. And despite this being a very, very enclosed cab and it's actually quite difficult to get a look inside the cab especially when she's running but despite all of that the detail in there is absolutely incredible uh, all of the gauges have paintwork on it it's probably not necessary but just knowing you've got such a lot of detail inside there is incredible and that's something that uh, the noticeably more expensive Backman Fairburn tank which outwardly has a similar amount of detail to this possibly not even as much uh, but it's certainly more expensive didn't have any paintwork inside the cab so uh, this Hornby version although it's not the same model by any means this Hornby one uh, is a lot more impressive to me already now looking at the buffer beams as you can see there's not a lot of riveting going on there and looking at photos of the real thing the buffer beams themselves are fairly rivet free but certainly above the buffer beams there was quite a lot of riveting on the images I saw no such thing on the model unfortunately so obviously it's not 100% realistic but a nice touch is that we have got sprung buffers on those uh, large sort of oval LMS buffers that you get occasionally so yep yeah, that's a nice touch and of course lamp irons above there which again Again, is, is quite a nice detailed touch to see and I already touched on the smoke box briefly but as you can see there is a separately fitted smoke box dart there and also the handrail which I believe is also separately fitted. The coal inside the coal bunker is relatively nicely done. That one looks to me as though it might even be removable and separately fitted, which is nice if you're someone who likes to take that out and put your own crushed coal inside there. So yeah, no problem with that. Just in front of that area, you can see that we have got the uh, the cab doors fitted, which is quite a nice thing to see fitted and not just included in the detail pack. So that's nice. I'm glad I haven't got to do that. And around the back, as you can see, there's quite a lot of handrails. Some of those have been a little bit sloppily fitted. I don't know whether that's an issue with the, uh, the factory or an issue with a previous owner who might have caught it but certainly it looks like some of those have been a little bit messily glued and there's a little bit of a glue mark on the coal bunker there again I can't really say that that's Hornby's fault because the uh, the previous owner could easily have done that but nonetheless you've got the capacity of the onboard water tank and also more sprung buffers around the back with lots of riveting going on on the buffer beam so there you have it uh, I think that gives you a good idea of the detail of course I haven't covered everything but hopefully these uh, close-ups have given you a bit of a flavor of just how much detail is on this thing. One thing I feel I ought to mention though is the beautiful array of uh, moving linkage and valve work here which is absolutely superb. It's impressive enough as it is right now just static as it is but once it gets running it really is a sight to see. So let's do that now. Let's put her down onto the track and uh, see if she can put her money where her mouth is. All right let's give that a shot. Okay, so there she is then down onto the track looking really, really attractive. And I know I keep banging on about that, but uh, yeah, I just find them so elegant. And I hope you guys do as well. I hope I, I do make sense when I say that. But uh, yeah, it's just something about it, something about the shape that uh, really gets me excited. Anyway, never mind that. Uh, she's about to be coupling up to some coaches here, some chocolate and cream coaches, five of those. So that's quite a heavy load for a relatively light tank engine. Although, of course, in real life, that would be no problem for her. But uh, anyway, let's now give her a little bit of a go at slow speeds. Now, she does have all driving wheel pickups, but unfortunately, the uh, the front truck and the rear bow, you don't have any pickups on them. And I found, actually, that that is a little bit of a disadvantage because, uh, you, you know, she doesn't cut out too much on points and such, but uh, you do find that you have to clean the wheels and pickups. And in fact, today, before this little running session, I've taken the pickups out and cleaned them because she just seems to grind them up quite quickly. And I think with a few more pickups on the non-driven wheels, she might do a little bit better. But other than that, she's actually really, really good. Let me try and get her to do a nice slow crawl for you. And uh, this is on DCC, by the way. And uh, there she goes. You can see that she is inching forwards. And that is absolutely incredible. Um, it would be completely full marks on the uh, slow crawl, if not for the fact that she does cut out occasionally. But uh, that is 
one of the best crawls I've ever seen, and I think I'm right in saying this loco has a five pole motor. I'm not absolutely sure though. Let me try and give you a close up on this. I mean, that it, it is unbelievable. And uh, this has been she's been doing this for thirty seconds without cutting out. It is incredible, and naturally she does run quite slowly. Um, even if I put her on sort of half speed, it is quite a nice slow run, which means she really needs to be. Um, pretty stable on the point work but if I just nudge her up to 10 miles an hour now that to me doesn't look like 10 miles an hour but uh, according to Railmaster it is and uh, the reason I've done that is so that she can go over the express point so excuse me while I just uh, drag the camera over there oh okay so she has cut out but she's come back to life uh, that was before she got onto the express point but uh, maybe I'm being a bit cruel by making her do it so slowly. Let me speed her up a little bit. Let's put her to what Railmaster considers 17 miles an hour. That's still very slow by most loco standards. And she's on the dead spot. The back wheel's on the dead spot. The back wheel's cleared the dead spot, and she's done it perfectly. So as you can see, me cleaning those pickups really uh, did a good job. And... Um, it's meant that she now does get over points, but uh, when I got her running this morning, that wasn't the case. And uh, I've only had her a few months, perhaps six months, so yeah, you need to be cleaning the uh, the contacts and things once in a while. And Railmaster is messing me around a bit. I'd set her to go in reverse, and it automatically changed it back to forwards again. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. Okay, speed her up a little bit, and uh, let's see her meet the coaches, shall we? Okay, steadily does it. Oh, she's gone and cut out. I think. Yep, yeah, I'm changing the controls and she's not going anywhere, so let me give her a nudge. There we go. Okay, that's uh, ruined my steady coupling a little bit, but uh, never mind. Okay, have the coupling hooks engaged? Pretty much. I have got uh, the large coupling here going on to the uh, slim coupling, so it's not ideal. But uh, I think that looks okay to me. So here we go then, the uh, the Stania Class 4 tank, absolutely beautiful, and I really am loving this uh, this BR Black, it's growing on me for sure. Uh, let me get her to a relatively high speed, I'll set her to about 60 on the controller. And as you can see, that isn't a massive speed, so, oh, she's cut out, come on, come on, you've just proved that you can do that. There we go. <laughs> Why would she be misbehaving? I don't know. Anyway, let me show you what's on the other lines then. Okay, so on the middle line, I'm going to be running another one of my favourite LMS locomotives, small time really. And that's the theme today, by the way. I'm going to be running lots of LMS locos. But uh, this one is the Princess, Princess Royal. I think this one is the Princess Royal. No, she's not. She's Elizabeth, I think. Is that right? Let me double check. Yes, she's Elizabeth, and she's got a big rake of Pullman coaches, well, a medium-sized rake, six of those, or is it five? Oh, five of those. Sorry, can't count today. And let me show you what's on the inside line then. And here I have another one of my favourites, and uh, this is a relatively new model to me. I only bought it fairly recently. Well, no, I got it for my birthday, actually, uh, back in February. Um, beautiful crab, of course, in the LMS Maroon. And she's got my very popular, ever popular, <laughs> Ocean of Ocean, ocean Wagons. So see which other engines you can spot out there on the layout, see how many you can count, and there is an odd one out. See if you can tell me what it is in the comments. So as you can see, overall she really does behave herself on the line. Uh, when she's cold, uh, no matter how clean the wheels are, I always find that she, uh, she does tend to stall occasionally on points or uh, complex track work. But after a couple of minutes of running, that always seems to improve. But certainly if you've got one and you find that she doesn't improve, you're going to want to take those pickups out. Make sure they're applying plenty of pressure to the wheels, and that should do the trick. But uh, yeah, mine's pretty much okay now, as you can see. And uh, no problems hauling up the slight incline there, so uh, pretty good all round, really. And what a beauty she is. Look at all those rods and things. Yep, yeah, as I say, the BR Black, today especially, is really growing on me. And you'll also notice, uh, on a different note, that the, the room is silent. I've got three engines running, and uh, there's pretty much no noise. And that's it, your uh, good Hornby mechanisms here. These are some of the mechanisms from the Hornby Golden Age, as some like to call it. And uh, this one's a Backman, this crab that's about to come by. Of course, she hasn't got a Hornby mechanism. 
but uh, she again is very nice and quiet so uh, yeah I'm really enjoying today already uh, just good locos they do their thing and you don't have to mess around with them they're uh, very reliable there's an interesting sight for the uh, train spotters out there don't think that's ever happened before I won't give away what they are in case anyone's trying to play don't often get these chocolate and cream coaches running either but uh, it's nice to do that for a change and uh, here comes the crab oops a little bit out of focus and a little bit too dark to see alright better look next time I'll try and get a better shot of the crab for you should be getting both the stania and the uh, the crab coming by here soon there we go that's a little bit better See if I can get all three together in the same shot at once. Yep, just about. Wow, I love doing LMS running sessions. Some of the nicest looking locos, that's for sure, anyway, came from the LMS, in my opinion. Let me know in the poll, I'll put up a poll, which of the big four produced the, uh, the nicest locomotives, in your opinion. So here are my ratings then on the unexpectedly impressive uh, Hornby Stania 264 tank. Detail then, 5 out of 5. To be honest with you, I can't really fault the detail. Everything on it was absolutely superb and for the age, I'm absolutely impressed by it. Power, 4 out of 5. She isn't the heaviest locomotive in the world, which does make a small impact on her pulling capabilities. But to be honest with you, she manages those 5 coaches without any problems at all and I've no doubt that she'd be able to manage more if I, if I tried that. So, absolutely fine. Good power ratings there. Slow speed again, pretty good. Actually, the slow speed itself is superb. It's just the fact that she's only got 3 sets of pickups uh, going to each line, which means that she is a little bit prone to cutting out. And perhaps if she had some pickups on her truck and bogey wheels, that would be alleviated. But still, very good good slow speed. Quality then, I've given it 4 out of 5, I've knocked one mark off purely because it's mostly plastic and you know a little bit of the detail is a little bit fragile but I can't necessarily attribute that to Hornby so I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt there because obviously it was second hand, I don't know what the previous owner might have done to it so I've given it 4 out of 5 there, I think that's fair. Value then for 70 to £100 pounds or less if you're lucky like I was at the train fair, I think that's pretty good value. I don't have much of an idea of the actual RRP but uh, I assume it won't have been too much higher than that well I hope not anyway so 4 out of 5 there overall then that is 8.56 out of 10 a very fair score and that puts her into the ranking 5th just above the Hornby B1 and below the Backman 4F yep yeah, I think that's a fair ranking So there you have it then folks, that is my review for the Hornby Stania uh, 4M, 4P tank engine I suppose you'd call it, or 4MT, whichever floats your boat. Uh, for a model that's getting on in years now, I'm uh, very impressed by it, as I'm sure you could tell. Um, she's just beautiful, she runs fantastically, she looks fantastic, and she didn't cost the earth either, and she's even got a DCC decoder, so what more could you ask for? Anyway, hope you enjoyed the review, and as always, if you did, please let me know in the comments, because I do love it when you guys get in touch. But for now, I think that's all I've got to say, so once again, thanks for your company, lovely to have you here, as always, and I will see you all very soon. Alright, cheers everybody.